driving around and this is a couple of days later after one of my most recent rants. Sometimes these podcasts are put together, you know, over a week or two period, just different times of me getting a chance to do some uh, talking into the microphone, some getting things off my chest. And right now I'm just trying to get some things off my chest, you know. And one thing I'm trying to get off my chest is that I want to change my life, okay? I don't like how my life's been going the last few years. Uh, I don't like where I'm at. I'd like to, I would like to have more. I'd like to have a better life. And when I say that, I'm talking about layers of stuff, not just one thing. Layers, layers of your life, okay? From a relationship to health talking layers here, folks. So I want it all, right? I want the good stuff. And it sure is hard to stay motivated when somebody criticizes you, isn't it? You know, when when there's people criticizing you all day, maybe an employer, maybe a family member, maybe even a, a, a lover or a friend, and you're getting criticized all the time, It's, it's not easy to take that, especially when the criticism is something really personal. And, you know, the, generally the closer the person is to you, the harder the criticism is. And I thought about that today because I got into a little argument with my dad about some stuff and I had to criticize him about some things and I really hated doing that. But I know that my argument with him is solid and he's upset really upset because I, I kind of called him out on it and I'll just give you, I'll give you an example. Okay. My father is, uh, 76 years old. Uh, he, uh, he, he doesn't like wearing a hearing aid. Okay. And he's kind of a loud guy. And when you talk to him, he, what, what'd you say? You know, it's quite, it's, if you're having a conversation with him, he'll say, what, what'd you say at least three times? I guess that's not the end of the world. Right. But for me, it's like, Hey man, you know, you should respect people more. You should wear that hearing aid. So you don't have to call them out. You don't have to be like, Hey, I can't hear you. You know, uh, you know, out of, re- out of respect for the conversation, out of his respect for other people. And I know that you're not wearing it dad because you know you think it makes you look old or maybe you just don't like how it looks and you know I have all the empathy in the world for something like that I would not want to wear a hearing aid myself okay I I do not want to wear a hearing aid okay but if if it all came down to it and I couldn't hear people I think I would choose to wear one just to have a conversation with somebody instead of saying I can't hear you okay and so that was the argument that that we had and and we it basically broke down to you know I don't need you telling me that I need a hearing aid I said listen you keep getting hearing aids and you keep losing them and it's a problem because you ne- you're never wearing one and you can you can't hear most people and I want you to hear people and uh I said to him, I said, you know, every time I do see you, you do have one thing. You always have your gun. You may not have your glasses. You may not have your hearing aid. But boy, you always carry that that uh, that gun of yours, you know. And uh, <laughs> you know, he, he won't have his reading glasses. He'll have his gun. Uh, he can't hear you. Oh, but he's got his gun. Okay. So maybe I said, maybe you should wear your glasses like you carry your gun. He's like, what? Yeah, I go, I go, maybe you should wear a hearing aid and actually use it, you know, like how you carry your gun. And he's like, what? You know, so I'm trying to relate with him. I'm, I'm trying to, and, and it, really, I'm just criticizing him, right? So here's what I think happens when you criticize somebody. I had this kind of epiphany as I was... Uh, over getting over this conversation and I was like okay when you criticize somebody 
when you're a family member or you're a, when you're close to the person. Sometimes even criticism works randomly. Like, you know, if you're on Twitter and somebody comes on your page and randomly criticizes you, it's not cool. So let's talk about what it does, especially when it's somebody close to you, like a family member or a friend, and you criticize your other family member or, or, or your friend. It, it, it hits their soul. It's a soul punch. And it's also a soul check. The criticism does two things. It's a fight or flight. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. What are you going to do? You're criticizing me. Ah, la, 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 la. Okay, I'm either going to bail, say, fuck you, I'm out of here, or we're going to fucking fight over this because you're a piece of shit. Criticism brings those two emotions instantly forward. And you, you're you being checked. It's like you're in life and somebody just went whack. They just punched you up against the wall in hockey. They just whack. They just checked you. Are you going to survive? What are you going to do? You're going to get back up? You're going to keep playing the fucking game? Or did you get knocked out? Did they hit you so hard? up against the fucking glass, they knocked your ass out, dude. That shit happens because we are criticizing each other. And when your soul gets criticized, you have to, it's a call to shout out. Now, an example to the criticism, it's very interesting because I think people react two ways. I think some people, maybe more than two ways, but let's just talk about this. Some people when you, when you criticize them, they get so bitter and so angry at what you said that they actually change their life because of that criticism. They changed the course of their life. That is massive. That a criticism can make somebody change the course of their life. A word said, googe, oh, Oh, now I got to change. Ah, f It's such a weird thing, man. It's like asteroids, dude. You're just firing these missiles at these asteroids. Boom, right? The criticisms. And people take the criticisms so hard, right? They take it to their soul. As long as you're not a, a sociopath. But um, just realizing that, that life can offer you uh, a day of criticism... I expect somebody's going to start criticizing the living shit out of me because of what, what just happened with me and my dad. I, I expect I'm going to get this probably tonight or tomorrow. Right? Somebody's going to be like, oh, look what you did. You told your dad to wear his glasses. You told him to fucking wear a hearing aid. You told him that he's the asshole because he doesn't wear a hearing aid. You, know? <laughs> you said you don't even care what people think. Why would you want to wear a hearing aid? All you want to do is talk over people. You don't listen. Oh, that was not good. That was that was downright mean. I never should have said that. And I apologize for saying that. I, I, I was being dramatic, you know. I really, I was just so mad, you know. And it's so stupid that I'm doing this with him. And, oh boy, I wonder what's going to happen to me now. Oh boy. So listen, I'm trying to change myself. I know that the amount of criticism I unleashed today on my father is going to have some sort of karmatic, karma boomerang, karma boomerang that's going to come back and get me, okay? And let's just hope that I can get ahead of that and start changing my life. That's how I started all this, okay? I started all this saying I need to get better. I want more in life. It's tough. I'm not, I don't like to wake up in the morning. I like to stay up really late and then sleep in and get a good amount of sleep. Enough sleep so I'm like, I got a good amount of sleep. Now I can get up and do things. Because I've had a sleeping problem since I was in, um, since I was in junior high. I had a problem falling asleep at, at night, right? So I would always lose sleep, have to wake up early, and it was rough on me growing up and um, I had to just develop a lifestyle of kind of like working later at night because I knew that these were my tendencies and um, <laughs> that's like a core thing it's like how do you change something like that how do you how do you change it well, I, I'm here to tell you I can't change that part about me not without taking some major drugs okay 
So I'm going to let that part be. I'm going to get my sleep. No matter what happens, I'm going to get my sleep. Because sometimes I'll be up for two days straight. And I have to get some fucking sleep. But, you know, some because you can't stay up, fucking, you know, not two full days, but, you know, enough to where uh, it's nearly two days and I'm dead tired. And that's when it gets hard to sleep. You ever lose so much sleep that when you go to sleep, you can't sleep? That's what that is. So what you have to do is you have to force yourself just to lay there and sleep. And you'll wake up many times in the beginning. And then finally, you'll get a really good amount of sleep. You'll get like six, five, six hours straight, good, solid sleep. And you'll wake up refreshed. And then you'll maybe you'll go to sleep again that same day because you've got to catch up. You know, you miss two two days, you owe 16 hours to sleep. You do. You miss three days, you owe 24 hours of sleep. You owe it. You got to get it in. You got to get a solid day of sleep in. And it's true. Your body just has to make those numbers back up. I'm going off on this sleep thing because, you know, I knew I could never be in the, in, in, in the military. And on my Mormon mission, it was so hard for me to wake up at 6, 19 a.m. every day. That was the hardest part of it because I was always up really late. I never could actually get to sleep on time. They, they wanted us to, to be asleep in bed at 1030. And I didn't, I never fell asleep till like two in the morning, you know, and it was never even a good sleep. And then back up at 6, 19 and it was just like, <sighs> and they don't let you take naps. And it's like, this is crazy. You know, I can't do this. So I knew I couldn't handle the military because I couldn't even handle my Mormon mission. I, I was on my mission for a year. I left. I left for other reasons, but I hated that part of it. And I, and and that part of it really was kind of like um, one of the bigger reasons why I was looking for answers of why I was so miserable on my mission. But really, I was miserable on my mission because I was depressed and because I had all these other issues that I was not aware of right out of high school. And I was a mess, you know? And I didn't know I was a mess. And I was put out into this uh, mission in Virginia, uh, Richmond, Virginia, and many other cities over a year's period. I was in Portsmouth, Suffolk, Norfolk. We have to adapt to our sleeping patterns, okay? That's a huge thing in life. I can't tell you how I learned it. I know I learned it, and I know I truly believe it. Once you can, uh, once you can get a rhythm uh, of your sleeping patterns down to where you are like clockwork, you know, this time, this time, this time, this time, like every day, same times, you're in your rhythm, you're in your rhythm, boom, 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 you know, synergy, boom, 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 you know, you're getting things going, right? Schedules, sleep, you know, relationships, church, no church, whatever you, whatever you're into, okay? Some sort of either spiritual or uh, science, scientific, you know, uh, ex, uh, explorations, you know, if you're not into God, explore science, you know, on Sunday, right? Take that time to separate yourself from your life and learn about things that are around you in this world we currently live in. You know, look at the latest inventions. Look at the latest, coolest gadgets coming out. Maybe even uh, learn about quantum theory and uh, learn about space and time and what the possibilities are of how many actual other intelligent life is in the universe. Give me a break. I'm tired of the argument. Billions. Billions. Don't be stupid. If every... I'm just going to be flat out simple on this one. If every galaxy had a pearl in it, Right? Let's just look at galaxies like uh, oysters. And they're contained. They're, you know, oysters are very much like a, like a galaxy. And, you know, they grow a certain way inside of that shell, right? Very interesting, oysters. And inside of this oyster, you know, uh, uh, you know, not that symbolism matters, but, you know, to me, symbolism does matter. I'm very into symbolism. I'm very into the fact that there's a pearl 
inside of that dirty, disgusting oyster. We don't know the shape of the universe. We do not know the shape of the universe. We know the shape of a galaxy. We know the shape of a galaxy. They're not all spiral, but let's talk about the spiral galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, the galaxy that we currently live in. I'm going to say that Earth is a pearl inside of an oyster. The galaxy is an oyster. The Earth is the pearl, and I'm very into symbolism. I just hate having to re, re say that. You understand what, what I'm saying? Now let's let's move let's move on, okay? If that's the case, if there's a pearl inside of every oyster, if there's an entire pizza out there to look at, we've only looked at one slice in space. The rest of it we haven't even looked at. You're like, Mark, what are you talking about? Yeah, what am I talking about? That's true. Go look it up. We've only looked at like a little slice of the pie, folks. And we're guesstimating how many galaxies are out there by what we've looked at on our one little slice of pizza. Now, what if you want half pepperoni, half sausage? How does that slice really compare? You're looking at a bunch of sausage, but what you don't realize is right behind you, there's a bunch of pepperoni. You haven't even looked at it yet. And that pepperoni, it's got mushrooms. You're like, what? That's right. There's so much more to look at out there. Okay? So if every galaxy has a pearl, and there's billions and billions of galaxies out there, that means that there's billions and billions of different life in different galaxies all over the universe, which we do not know the shape of. Oh, it's bell-shaped. You don't know that. You don't know where the top and bottom of the universe is. You don't know any of that. Tell me there's a top and a bottom. You don't know bull-ish-ish. You don't even know what eternity looks like. You couldn't. None of us really could. So what am I spouting off about? I'm spouting off about a couple things. Maybe we should uh, ease up on the criticism. And maybe we should realize that when we criticize people, we're really doing a soul punch. It's not a physical punch. It's a soul punch that actually makes them change their life depending on what you said. And it can be really offensive and mean sometimes. Some people kill themselves because somebody said something that was so true and cut them so quick to the core that they couldn't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. Okay, what movie was that on, Tom Cruise? What movie was, was, was that in, Jack Nicholson? What movie was that in, A Few Good Men? You can't handle the truth. You want to know the truth? The truth is we're out there risking our necks on the line. We're saving you against that killer across the gate. The truth is you need these people to be awake. You need these people to be on time. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. You can't handle the truth. If this soldier doesn't do his job, the lie fails, we fail, we all die. <laughs> Shit like that. You can't handle the truth, buddy. You got hit so hard by somebody's criticism of you. You know, I saw this woman criticizing this child at Starbucks today, of all the times, before I called my dad and criticized him. Um... He was probably like 12. She was like, I don't know. I really don't know, man. I'm going to guess either 18 or 20. Okay. She's could be a mom. Could I don't know what the hell the relationship was. This kid was just crying and unhappy. And she was constantly 
belittling him and making him feel like a piece of garbage, you know, this little kid. And it was just a horrible thing to watch. I, I, she was wearing these goth boots and she was kind of overweight and she had this dark makeup on and the flat matte dark hair and, and she just kind of had a bad attitude. You know, it was almost like, and I hate to say this and I don't want to just judge somebody. Right. But I got the impression, the impression, not that I'm right about this, but I got the impression that, you know, she hated men and she was almost taking it out on this poor kid. That was the abuse that he was taking. It was so weird how she would treat him. You know, no, you go ahead of me. Like they come walking up to Starbucks out of the parking lot. I'm sitting there working on my computer and the, they go to the front door to open it. And uh, she opens it and she goes, and he, he's behind her. And, and she goes, no, you go ahead of me. And, and she goes, and, and he goes, no, you can go ahead of me. She goes, no, no, you go ahead of me now. And she was just bullying him. Every little weird thing she could do to him. Then, then, then I go inside and they're arguing about something else. And, and he kept calling her out. And he's like, you know, you know, you're not like her. You're not like her. You know, you do this to me. You do that to me. He was calling her out saying, you know, you do these things to me, you know, and, and, it, and I, he was so mad and upset. And I could just see, I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to be, hey, man, don't let this stuff bother you, man. This girl, she's doing something to you. She's, she's getting some vengeance on you right now. You know, you need to like, don't fight back. Just don't say anything. Just be silent. You know, he just kept arguing with her and stuff. And she just kept getting worse and worse. So I don't think it was a mother's son. It was almost like a stepmom type of, type of vibe. So back to criticisms, right? I saw this kid getting criticized. And that's another reason why I thought about what happened with my, with my dad and I, because our conversation started out great. We were talking about something totally different. Somehow we got off on this subject that he needs to wear a hearing aid and he needs to wear his glasses and he doesn't wear them enough. And he doesn't wear them like he carries his gun. 99% of the time he's got his gun on him. The other 99% of the time he doesn't have his glasses or his hearing aid. Okay. And it's not like I, I really wanted to like be mean to him or anything, but arguments are just so stupid. Sometimes you'll start getting heated and then you'll start arguing about something that happened before that. Like, oh yeah, remember this? Remember that? Oh, that's terrible. Okay, so watch out, guys. That's easy to do. Let's not argue with our parents and our siblings. And if you feel yourself getting into an argument, pull back on the reins and, and realize that the criticism that's about to come out of your mouth is really a soul punch. It's actually a physical, it's not physical, but it is, it, it touches you, touches you. It, it touches your being. It doesn't hit your skin. It touches your soul. So you could almost be like, oh, it's so offensive that you criticize me because, you know, it hurt my feelings so bad. And it, that's a true statement. You hurt my feelings. Well, what are your feelings? Your feelings are your soul. And your soul got hurt. Now we know your feelings aren't your soul. We know your feelings are attached to your brain. And we know you're having all these emotions because, you know, we have something called the ego, okay, within us. And well, however that works, okay, however that works. I don't want to get into the, the deep dark secrets of psychology. I want to get into the more broad perspective of symbolism, the more broad perspective of the spirit and the soul and feelings and how somebody can say you hurt my feelings and you know what they mean. As a human being, you, you go, oh, I hurt your feelings. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Like, if you can hurt somebody's feelings, isn't that almost more than physically punching them? Because a physical punch to the, to the like, arm, you know, to the, a punch to the shoulder, ooh, that hurt, you know, Charlie Horse even, ooh, that's going to hurt for, like, days, right? But it didn't hurt your ego. It didn't hurt your ego. It wasn't a criticism to the soul right? But yet you can criticize some somebody and not punch them at all and do more damage to them 
by literally uh, making them feel bad, okay, like you hurt their feelings, and, and you hurt their feelings so bad that it was worse than punching them physically. Is that is that a real thing? I think it is. I definitely think it is. I think you can verbally say something to somebody and criticize them so perfectly like a knife. It's the it's how the criticism comes, it's how you say it, it's when it's you do it when the person's completely off their guard. For instance, that that person is so in love with you and trusts you so much and they go out and they and they buy you a certain type of car you know, to fix up and you go, I hate it. Ah, oh, you take it back. That's the worst choice ever. And you just start going off about how, what a bad decision that was. We're going to take it back. How could you make that decision? Why would you do such a thing? Why would you buy that car without telling, why would you buy, why would you pay that much money? You overpaid for it. And they just chop you to pieces, right? You're vulnerable you're in love, you trust that person, you haven't had a fight in years, you go out, you do a good thing, I'm doing a good thing, I'm buying him a truck, I'm overpaying for it, so what, everybody overpays for a truck in this country, go out and try to buy a good truck, a good used truck, you will never be able to get a good deal on a good used truck, you just won't, people are overpaying for trucks right now, they are overpaying because that's the market, and my some people that I know, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to get into details here. All right. Anyway. You can say things to somebody at the right moment, at the right time, where that little quip that you said to them was a silver bullet. You're like, Mark, how's that possible? It's possible. It's possible. People kill themselves all the time because that shit happens. Even people doing well in their lives, they're doing well, everything's going right. Some random person comes by and says the perfect thing at the perfect time. Let's take away the randomness. Somebody close to them comes by, really close. Somebody that they trust comes by and says something so perfect and so quippy and it cuts their heart in half and it's so right it's so true and it hurt them so much that this person reacted that 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 way you're reacting this way to this oh my god oh, i can't take it you don't believe me <laughs> believe me you don't want to be that person i want you to think of it like that you don't want to be the person that delivers the criticism to the person that's going to take that to heart. It's going to hurt their feelings. Do you really want to hurt? Do you really want to hurt their feelings? If you do want to hurt their, their feelings, you need to go see a counselor and you need to, you need to go get your life fixed. Okay. If you do want to hurt their feelings, maybe you should uh, look, go look into Jesus. Okay. If you actually do want to, yeah, if you actually do want to hurt their feelings, I don't want to deal with you. You should stop listening to my podcast right now. But if you don't want to hurt somebody, okay, meaning I already told you, you can hit them. That's going to actually not hurt them as bad as a soul punch, especially if you're close to that person and the stuff that you're coming back at them with is like, how dare you buy that truck? Don't you know that I'm a mechanic and you went out and you bought this truck that you overpaid for, and it's a piece of shit, all this stuff's wrong with it, you start finding stuff wrong with it, like, what? You're gonna cut somebody apart for, for buying you a gift? Because it wasn't, because she didn't consult you first, or what is that, is that an ego thing? Oh, you were a mechanic, so, so your lady couldn't go out and buy you a truck, because what would she know, right? That, that poor woman. She can't take that type of criticism. She's in love with this man. He starts criticizing her for, for, for buying him a truck that was a piece of garbage that she overpaid for, and he just went ballistic about it. You don't think that's going to really seriously mentally affect that person? 
because because it is okay it's going to mentally affect that person big time i know it for a fact i've seen it happen so watch what you say because sometimes you'll say it at the right time in that person's life even if it's a random person on twitter even if it's a random person on twitter it still works I know you're like, no, it couldn't possibly work. Well, it kind of does. Because what's happening is those people that are on Twitter, they don't really have a lot of people in their life that they're close to physically. They might have a couple people, but they're really not physical people. Some of them are. Some of them are, some of them are movie stars and stuff. But your average Joe that's commenting is kind of an introvert in a way, right? And maybe the average person has more friends. Okay, so that person who's commenting, and you got to watch out for actual trolls, uh, you're putting your photos out there, you're putting your videos out there, you're letting uh, Joe Blow come over here and tell you his opinion uh, on you. And you're going to hear some stuff you don't like. Doesn't matter how perfect your video might be, doesn't matter how perfect your picture might be, doesn't matter. It's always going to happen. I've, I'm a testament to it. I've seen it myself. There's always going to be minimum 20% that uh, are going to hate you. I can't explain it. I just realized that when you put yourself out there, when you publish your stuff publicly, you're inviting people whose opinions truly if you met them in in real life you'd be like oh screw that person I don't care what they think but because you don't know who they are you don't know how their voice sounds um, you're just taking a text opinion of yourself black and white you're reading it and, and a lot of times some of these people just have a natural gift to just look at the one thing that's wrong with you and point it out hey big chin look at that big chin that's a big Jay Leno chin. If that person heard that on the right day, they're going to fucking kill themselves. Mom, Jay Leno chin. Ma, he's right. It's useless. <laughs> it's true, man. Or maybe they'll just quit broadcasting, period. Maybe, maybe they'll just quit doing their Twitch channel because your comment, the last comment broke that person's soul. The last comment that came in was so ruthless and so cunning, and and, sh and they were right, you know, that's the problem, is the person's pointing out something that's obvious, and when you hear somebody point it out, you go, oh, they're right, I am, I have a big nose, oh, I have a big nose, oh, no, right, or I'm not that pretty, oh, no, oh, no, okay, anything is going to cut you to the soul, your eyes are too close together, whoa, my eyes are too close together, oh, my God, your eyes are too far apart, my eyes are too far apart, oh, my God, you have thin lips, oh, I have thin lips, oh, you have big lips, oh, I have big lips, oh, <laughs> look at your Adam's apple, oh, no, look at my Adam's apple, oh, my God, look, folks, oh, your ears are droopy, oh, droopy ears, Oh, I have no, I have thin eyebrows, thin eyebrows, I have thin eyebrows. Look at your bushy eyebrows, oh, I have bushy eyebrows. Give me a break. Oh, I'm bald, oh, I have too much hair. I have hair all over my forehead, I have too much hair. I'm a Wookiee child. I am a, I'm a, oh, I am a, <laughs> the thing, you see those images of these feet like chupacabras. <laughs> Too much air. Oh man. Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, criticism is real. It, it's it's more real than a physical punch. Okay, and that is the problem with Donald Trump. And people, are, ah, stop it! Don't talk about Donald Trump. Well, okay. Let me just give you a fair warning. And I'll probably end up voting for Trump. But but the thing is, he needs to ease up on the criticism. Because I just explained to you what criticism does to the right person on the right day at the right time. So if you get somebody like Donald Trump in office and he criticizes Putin on the right day, on the right time, 
and says the right thing. And you say, what do you mean, Mark? I say, it's within that troll, it's within that person to point it out. He may point out that Putin is uh, too short and looks like a mouse and blah, 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 whatever it is that he might say that would be a, uh, a criticism and, and he did it at the right time on the right day and he's close enough to that person to, for it to actually, look at this, she's on her phone, she doesn't even look, doesn't even look, doesn't even look, dude, that is crazy, dude, straight up, was on her phone, she's still on her phone, okay, this girl, okay, I, I'm, I'm coming down the street, this girl, she's crossing the crosswalk, right, I'm coming, she's not even looking, she's looking at her phone, she started crossing the crosswalk without looking if a car was going to run into her. Head down, two hands on her phone, walking right in front of me. I, Holy shit, I stopped my car. She she walked past me. She didn't even see that I had jerked my car to stop. She didn't even look up from, oh, she, she side-eyed me. She side-eyed me. She went, she side-eyed me. And I go, look at you. You didn't even look. So So here's the thing, kids. She was young. That girl was straight up on her phone, <laughs> not looking both ways as she crosses a crosswalk. She side-eyed me, and I pointed at her. I go, you didn't even look. Now, I criticized her, didn't I? That was a constructive criticism. I, I have to do that to somebody that nearly got killed in a crosswalk, okay? That type of stuff, you know, that's not that bad of a criticism, okay? But what I'm worried about is that Donald Trump might come along and as much as I like Trump, as much as I am persuaded that they were out to get Trump, I could go on and on. I still think he's a loose cannon. And I still think he says, when, you know, when he said Rocket Man, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like that. Okay? Because that's, a, that's criticism done on the right day at the right time where you might set off this guy to actually send a, a nuclear weapon just because the criticism cut him to his soul and we don't want that we don't want we're human guys we're f human okay and because we're human these things are possible in a world of nuclear weapons a soul punch from a criticism is actually a reality and you say yeah but donald trump never physically punched putin he never physically touched him no 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 it was the verbal criticism that punched his soul that got him to set off a nuke in New York because who knows why because he said something that made him so mad that hit him to the soul right we don't want that so that's what I say is a loose cannon and that's why I say the criticism can make this planet win and it can make this planet lose you can be constructive like Elon Musk Elon Musk gives constructive criticism and people, some people hate hearing it. And it's even hard for me to hear sometimes. But if you go over what he's saying, he's not perfect or anything. I'm not saying Elon Musk is perfect. I'm saying most of the time. Sure, he's a troll sometimes. Sure, he does some shit. But uh, the stuff that I'm listening to, the stuff that I'm paying attention to, the important stuff, uh, he's definitely more into constructive criticism. And, and he's into, you know everybody bettering themselves and, and living in a better life. He's also a, a realist and knows just how bad people actually are. Look, I have a whole in-depth thing I'm going into next, okay? I'm going into something that is symbolism. I'm going into an explanation that I have about our planet, and it's not anything that's based in science, okay? It's more based in, like, theory and symbolism. And it's it's fun to think about, in my opinion, because it, um, it will allow you to get a perspective that um, it will help you kind of be like, look, we're all on this planet together. Okay, and we got to get along so that we can blossom, so that we can bloom, and so that we can leave the, the planet and uh, make space stations and, and live outside of the planet 
uh, and come back to the planet back and forth all the time. And, um, we should just be doing that just in case uh, an asteroid or whatever does come by or just in case a super volcano does go off, right? We don't, we don't control the crust of the earth. We don't, we don't control that. But if once you get outside in space and you have space stations, you have way more control out there. You know, you don't have typhoons and hurricanes coming in and fucking volcanoes and you don't have all that in space. Oh, but you don't have gravity. You can make gravity. You spin the space station. You spin it. You create gravity like a gyroscope. <laughs> Werner von Braun talked all about it in, in the in the 60s. Uh, they just never built it. It was too big. But, but with 3D printers these days, you can do it. You can do giant 3D printers in space making space stations. That's a reality. Okay, and space stations are a reality. You just have to have safe spacecraft that can come in and out of the of the planet's uh, stellar atmosphere, the stellar sphere, <laughs> stellar sphere. Uh, you just need a, a vehicle that's safe for entry and re-entry, and you need to make it safe enough where people don't die, right? So um, once you do that, it's going to become great. It's going to become cheap to do it, and people will do it all the time. And then we'll be able to keep doing it and evolve that way outside of the planet. So instead of there being wars over land, well, land won't be worth anything once space is out there and there's uh, there's a there's a apartment to rent on a space station for you know fifteen hundred a month, and you work at the space station too, just like a big cruise ship, right? Like you know those big cruise ships that. You know, the people live there all year round. They have their own little cabin. They work there. It's the whole thing. Okay. And, and it's just like that. It's like building giant cruise ships in space, connecting them together, spinning them, making gravity, allowing people to live there permanently. And of course, they come back to Earth all the time. It's just, you have to come back to Earth. It's part of it. Right. But um, that's where we should be going but if we poison the planet and if we soul punch each other enough if we criticize each other enough that we where we tear each other apart think of it like a seed a little seed we are the atoms inside of a little seed that was planted in a garden and every day that seed gets sunlight and every day the earth spins and the whole thing happens, right? Well, earth is kind of like a seed in space. Earth is a is the seed of our solar system that is perfectly aligned with the sun where it's getting enough to actually start to blossom and to bloom. The earth is basically popcorn popping on the apricot tree. That's earth. Popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Think about it. What are you talking about, Mark? What are you talking about? I'm talking about satellites. Yeah. Sputnik. That's popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Sputnik. We're, we are a seed in space. We are the atoms. We are the intelligent life that inhabits the seed called Earth. We are microscopic, tiny little creatures. Yet we can criticize each other. We can criticize each other and we can cut each other's egos apart and do it in such a way that it makes us want to go to war with each other. It makes us want to kill ourselves. We can criticize. We can soul punch without physically punching somebody. Just by verbal words, criticism. And because the criticism is so poignant, it's so perfectly cunning, it's like a knife. We're living on a seed called Earth in space. That seed rotates around a, a light source. That seed started to bloom recently in the 50s. Sputnik. 
That was the first blossom. Sputnik. Popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Sputnik. Oh, but the Russians did it. Why are you giving Russians credit? F- you. You know how many you know how many people died? You know how many Russians died in World War II? More than any nation. The Russians were slaughtered more. The Russians lost more lives than any other nation. Pretty sure I'm, I'm, I'm right about that. Um, the Stalingrad, don't even get me started, okay? They had the women fighting in Stalingrad, okay? Stop beating, stop, stop punching down on the Russians. The Russians, the Russians, popcorn popping on the apricot tree. They were the first kernel, the first blossom of popcorn. One. They were the first blossom of popcorn. Anyway. <laughs> okay. After Sputnik, we, re- 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 we released our own satellites and so on and so and so forth. Okay? And ever since then. Blossoms everywhere. You say, Mark, Mark, stop it. These are not blossoms. Yes, they are. Let me explain. We are the atoms of the seed. We are actually, like, if we were were a seed of a tree, we would start to grow like a tree. But we're not the seed of a tree. We're the seed of uh, humans. And what we blossom are the inventions that we make with our hands and we make in our factories. We invent things. We invent new things constantly over each other, on top of each other. And we do it not even knowing why we do it. We've made ways to do it. Well, the next better one's coming out next year, you know. Luckily, we have free enterprise. Luckily, we have capitalism that allows us to progress our technology and have a new edition coming out next year. Luckily, we live our lives like that because that's what's going to get us into space. The fact that we have been making the computer better every year, smaller, faster, better. Every year, the computer gets smaller, faster, better. Well, if we didn't live our lives like that, we would never blossom. We would never pop out of the atmosphere, okay? It's our job. We are the atoms of this planet. Why do you think his name is Adam in the Bible? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. He's an atom on a seed. He is an atom on a seed. We are the atoms of the seed. It is our job to make this planet blossom, to make it bloom. We have two options. We make the planet bloom. We bloom so much that we make space stations, big lily pads in space, big space stations popping out outside of our Earth. We go out. We live on those space stations. We make more space stations, more lily pads, more. We are an organism. We are an actual physical seed in space. We are the human seed, and we are going to make lily pads that are giant space stations and we're going to we're going to make hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them and we're going to live in space and we're going to come to back and forth to our planet all the time and that is innately within us that's in our dna we didn't we didn't choose that that it chose us that's our destiny our destiny is to blossom and bloom create space stations terraform other planets, leave this planet, but we are making things to do that. We make instruments and we make spaceships and we cover ourselves. We enable the atoms of this planet to leave this planet in in inventions that we make, in spacecraft that we make here in our factories. When we put a bunch of atoms inside of it, we put a bunch of atoms inside of these rockets And we send these atoms traveling through space in these rockets and we temporarily house them inside of these giant space stations that can sustain an atom. 
We are the atoms. That's what we're doing in space. That's our job. Our job is to get along as a planet, not tear each other apart, not criticize the shit out of each other to where we want to nuke each other. That's not our job. Our job is not to criticize each other. Our job is to get along and to help each other, to cooperate and leave the planet. And once we leave the planet, we'll cooperate even more. Oh, an earthling way out here in space. Oh my God. I don't care if you're black, white, Chinese, red, Indian. I don't care what you are. Get, let me hug you. We are a million miles from earth. Do you get it? Your atoms, your atoms, we're all atoms, made up of atoms. Woohoo! <laughs> I don't want to get into that. I have no idea how that shit works. Okay, but let me tell you something about what I, what, what about my whole big idea here. This is the not the happiest ending, but I have to end it all like this because it's a warning. And we need to heed to the warning, which is our seed, like any other seed that gets planted in a garden. Isn't it funny how it's called the garden? The Garden of Eden. What if the Garden of Eden is the entire universe? And every soul, every uh, galaxy is like the hand of God, like planting a bunch of seeds, you know, in a galaxy. You don't know. What if the black holes are actually seeds, galaxies caving in, but they're not caving in, they're growing outward. They're growing into God's realm. They're taking all the particles and they're reconverting them into something that maybe God uses as food. You don't know. You don't fucking know. What if the black holes are literally converting all that matter into a new plant and it's, that plant is growing outside of our universe in the sunlight? We're in a dark world. We're in the soil. Space is the soil. We're in we're in a garden. We're in so dark soil. The uh, every galaxy is underground. We are all in dark soil. We are all underground. We are all given a light source in our dark soil. There is a light source that we have a we have a sun. Right? Our sun is providing the heat and light that this seed needs to grow. The atoms on the seed can never grow without a sun. We would be dead. We would not be here without a sun. Sun is everything to us. Without the sun, we have nothing. But isn't it funny how the Bible talks about the sun and how important the sun is and the sun is the right hand of God? Well, the sun is the sun. That's symbolism. The sun is the sun. The sun is the right hand of God. The sun is everything to us, symbolically. I think it's interesting how you, when you look at these things, like, it's just like, man, this is like some weird, shit, you know? So, look, if we don't get along, the seed can destroy itself from the inside. You ever seen a seed in a garden that didn't grow, didn't bloom? Or maybe it started to bloom, then it died? It poisoned itself from within? The seed just stopped growing and whack, started rotting away? You ever wonder what happened to that seed? I'm going to tell you what happened to that seed. Those atoms inside of that seed, they started tearing each other apart. They started making fun of each other. They started criticizing each other to the core. And they nuked each other. And they poisoned the inside of that seed. And that seed stopped blooming. That's how that happened. It wasn't your fault. Sometimes farmers say, well, you just don't know which seed's going to grow. You just got to plant a lot of them and then hope, hope for the best. But what's actually happening there are the, the individual atoms inside of those seeds are talking and, and having conversations just like we are. They're having lives. They live their little lives inside of their little atom world, inside of that seed. And the seed starts to bloom and everybody's like, we got to work hard. We gotta, blah, blah, blah. Oh, did I hate this guy? He hates you. Oh, man, we have the internet now. F*** everything. Ah. Inside of that seed, they have the internet, bro. They have Wi-Fi inside of that seed. Inside of that apple seed in that farmer's field, they're living an entire life 
And the reason that they're rotating is because we're rotating. The Earth is rotating. It's all... It's pi. It's pi. It's pi. It just keeps going on and on and on. So... My thought is this. If we can get along as a planet and not nuke each other and not corrupt and kill the, the, the streams and the, the, the clouds and the natural fish and wildlife and each other, if we cannot poison and kill each other with our nuclear weapons because we are disagreeing with each other's moral or ethical practices, uh, that would be a great thing because we need to get along in order for our seed to bloom and to blossom, for our children to have an actual life, for our children's children to have a life, and for us to figure out how to stop aging, and for us to figure out how to reverse aging. They're, they're already working on it. And if they're working on it now, just think in a, where, where, where they'll be in 100 years. In 100 years, they'll have figured it out. They will be able to stop aging and reverse aging. Yeah, they will. Now that is something. You'll be able to be in space 300, 400, 500 years. You're alive. No problem. Why would I want to live that long? I don't know. I don't know. Why not? Why not live as long as you can until you have to die? I mean, if eternity is eternity, living as long as you could, 10,000 years even is a drop in the bucket compared to eternity, right? So... My point is, uh, we don't want to have nuclear war. We don't want to have this planet get poisoned and all the blooming stops. And all the life withers away on the inside. I want you to think of a dying seed in your garden and think about the earth and think about the fact that we are in bloom. Okay? And we are in bloom now. So if we can get along and bloom and keep blooming and blossoming, then it's going to be popcorn, popcorn, popcorn popping on the apricot tree. 